let it melt down, the inside is melting, and we'll let you have a little view of what that looks like. So as you can see, we have the butterscotch chips and the peanut butter, and they're starting to melt very, very nicely together. My name is Sandy Roberts, and today we're going to make something really good. We call it Crixis Cookies. And Crixis Cookies are super easy to make, and there's only four ingredients in them. So let's talk about what's in the Crixis Cookies. There's going to be 12 ounces of butterscotch chips. Then we have one cup of creamy peanut butter. We have six ounces of chow mein noodles. Those are the um, toasted noodles that you put on food sometimes. And we have four cups of miniature marshmallows. So these are really easy to do. So let's get started here. Now when I was a kid, my mom used to make these for us all the time. Uh, they, we used to call them hopscotch cookies. So, uh, but today, these are the Crixis cookies, and we're gonna start. So, the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna have a double boiler. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with what a double boiler is, basically you have a pot that's got water and the top is kind of a bowl shape on the bottom and you put the top pot into the bottom pot. The bottom pot has water in it. It's rounded in the bottom so you can see like the inside of this pot is rounded. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna turn on our stove. I had preheated it a little bit. That's why you're seeing a little bit of steam. So we're gonna turn on our stove. Now, the next thing we're gonna do to make these cookies is we're gonna take our one cup of creamy peanut butter and we're going to put it into our double boiler. So we've got our one cup, it's gonna go in. And along with our peanut butter is going to be our butterscotch chips. So we had one cup of creamy peanut butter and now we have 12 ounces of butterscotch chips. They're gonna to melt together. We're gonna to just kind of stir it as we go. Now here's the thing. You could use your microwave oven. It's not how I would recommend to make something like this. Anytime you wanna melt down any kind of chocolate, or a candy or something like that. Although you can do it in the microwave oven, it's way easier to burn it that way also. So in a devil boiler, you're less likely to burn the product. So we're putting that in the pot and we're gonna let it melt down. The inside is melting and we'll let you have a little view of what that looks like. So as you can see, we have the butterscotch chips and the peanut butter, and they're starting to melt very, very nicely together. Okay, so you can see that going on, and this is the base of these cookies. So while we are melting down our butterscotch chips and our peanut butter, we're gonna put in the bowl the chow mein noodles and the marshmallows, and we're just gonna kinda mix them up. Because eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this melted mixture and we're gonna pour it on top and we're gonna mix it all together to make these cookies. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our miniature marshmallows, four cups, and we're gonna pour them in. And we're gonna pour in our chow mein noodles into the same bowl. So the next thing we're gonna do, we poured in our miniature marshmallows and our chow mein noodles into a big bowl. Because eventually, we're going to be pouring in the melted peanut butter and butterscotch chips mixture. 
So here we go, we're still cooking. You wanna make sure as this is going that you do take your little spatula and you just kind of help it along and don't let the peanut butter or the butterscotch chips stick to the edge of the pan here. Remember, what we're using here is a devil boiler. So we've got the pot of water in the bottom. There's another pot with a rounded bottom that sits into the bottom pot. And we call this setup a double boiler. What we're doing is we're trying to prevent burning. If we were to put this in the microwave, we might have a little bit of burning issue. So we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but we're gonna do this in a double boiler. Now what you can see now is it's melting down really nicely. It's almost ready to pour onto our noodles and, and uh, marshmallows. So there it is, you can see it in the pot. It's um, looking really creamy and getting together really nicely. You can see the uh, butterscotch chips aren't completely melted yet, but they're getting really close. So once we have it all melted and nice and creamy and smooth, we are going to be able to pour it onto our chow mein noodles. So it's getting nice and creamy and smooth and pretty soon it's gonna be ready enough for us to be able to pour it onto the chow mein noodles and marshmallow mixture and we're gonna mix it all together and toss it and then we'll be able to take it and scoop it into cookies. Once again, we're making the Crixis cookies. And you're at the Cast King Kitchen. So I kind of, um, one thing I'll tell you about these that I like is because they have the peanut butter in them, I feel like they're healthy because of the peanut butter. They're probably not healthy, but it makes me feel better when I eat them. I love sweets and I love baking. This is just a really easy um, recipe to make. So if you had children, they can easily help you with any part of this. You might want to do the double boiler part, but as far as mixing up the noodles and um, marshmallows and making them into the cookie mounds, it's a fun thing to do with um, children. So now it's time to take our mixture and pour it nicely all over our marshmallow and noodle mix. Once we get it all out of the pan, and we've got a spatula, so we're gonna scrape it out. You can see that I'm using a um, pot holder to make sure that I don't burn myself, because I've got just a metal pan here, and I don't have a handle on it. So I take a pot holder, because it, it does get a little bit hot. The next thing we do, Take it, I'm just gonna mix it together. I'm spilling some as I go. Sometimes I try to be as neat as possible. Sometimes I become kind of messy when I do stuff like this. But anyway, I'm mixing it all up. Once again, these are really easy cookies to make. Just toss it all around until you can have it all mixed up really really nicely. So now what we're doing is we've got it all mixed together and we're going to take a couple spoons and we're just going to make these little stacks of cookies here. We're making the Crixis cookies. They're almost done. Um, you can make them smaller than this. I, I always make cookies big. I just, I think cookies are just so much better when they're bigger. So. I make them bigger, but that, these are probably bigger than people would normally make them for. If you're gonna make them for a kid, of course, you might wanna make them smaller. I'm making them for Clay, and I know he's gonna want them bigger, so I'm gonna make them for him, so they're not gonna be um, too small. But uh, you definitely can make these bigger. You just take your spoon, and you just kinda let it go off. I love this, this, uh, these cookies. Um, makes you wanna just start eating this dough, which you could eat right now. The only thing that is not done with it, because you don't cook these, you know, they don't get baked. So the only thing that isn't done right now is what has to happen is we're gonna scoop these all out, and then 
they're gonna kind of just harden up. Um, it, it makes it really easy when I do something like this because what I've done is put down wax paper. My counter here is granite and so it's actually kind of cold here in Colorado and so the granite isn't really very warm right now. So when I put the cookies on the wax paper which is sitting on the granite counter, they should harden up pretty quickly. So what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to let them sit for after we scoop them onto this uh, wax paper then what we want to do is we want to let them sit for probably a half hour and then well, they, we want to make sure they're hard enough. It might take an hour but what we want to do is we want to let them sit for a bit, harden up, turn into cookies and then like these. Now you don't really need to serve these with anything else. You know, like maybe they would be really good with like ice cream or something like that. But they're so rich and so good you really just eat them by themselves. Maybe with a glass of milk or something like that. But other than that, you're probably not going to need anything else to go with these. They're really good. There we go. We have them all down there. Okay, so we have finished our cookies. We took them off the wax paper and we plated them up. So the only thing left to do, they go really good with milk. The only thing left to do is to try them. So let's see what they taste like. Those are really good. Have a good day. I'm Sandy Roberts and you've reached the Caspian Kitchen.